Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to the Bearded Klansman. As you can see, there's only one Bearded Klansman today, and we have uh, Aaron Groth from the Wars to Come podcast helping us out today with our video for the Shadow City pa the Shadow City Pack review. I keep calling it the Shadow City for some reason. Speaking of Shadow, I'm, I'm repping the five o'clock <laughs> Shadow. That's right. So Specifically, I'm for almost Shadow there. City. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm almost so, there. Uh, I'm gonna Aaron have Aaron introduce himself real quick. What he likes about the game, how he got into it, and tell us his favorite faction, and then we're gonna dive right into looking at six skins. All right, so I'm uh, pretty old with the 2.0 meta. I started in 2015. Um, I started playing card games when I was a young kid, Star Wars CCG specifically. The Cypher one? Yeah, okay. the, the Cypher. So my buddy uh, Chris Thompson, or CT as most of you guys know him, he got me into the lore, so I immediately played this game. Um, my favorite faction has been, since the beginning, Martell. And they're really good to play right now, so I'm kind of happy with that. <laughs> That's awesome, especially with the new box that just came out Absolutely. and all of the new stuff coming out there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's dive right into the Shadow City. So the first thing we should probably talk about is the Shadow mechanic. We're going to see that on a mm -hmm. bunch of the cards today. You know, uh, if you haven't looked at these cards before, or maybe you just are seeing these for the first time because you haven't bought the pack or whatever, uh, you're going to see weird uh, cost icons in the top left yeah. of all the Shadow cards to let you know it's a Shadow card. Uh, Shadow has about a two-page explanation in this newest set, so I'm not going to go through all of it here, but basically you marshal a card in a Shadow for two gold, and you can play it for its Shadow cost later as an action. That's the, That's the, the thin, and, thin and thick of it, but there's a lot that go goes into that, you know? Absolutely. Shadow cards that are characters aren't considered to be marshaled, they're considered to be played out of Shadows, so some of that stuff won't trigger and so on and so forth. So uh, we'll talk about that as those cards come up. But The biggest thing, too, from the 1.0 to now is it's an action. So remember, action windows are pretty much in every phase. Yep. So. Except for that tricky one that's at the end of the plot phase. So you can't do it before plots are revealed, yep. only after, only which after. is really important. Yep. <laughs> But uh, we're gonna look at our first card here. Um, uh, we got our wildling fronting up the pack number one in the shadow. Or the this is the dancing shadow cycle, by the way. Just in case <laughs> you were wondering, uh, five cost character with a military icon and three power. Uh, we got a unique Var Varimar Six Skins wildling, and his reaction is at the challenge phase begins. You can um, choose one of the following: uh, make him a bear and give him five strength. You know, make him an eagle and give him an intrigue icon and insight, so a little bit of draw. You can make him a cat and give him a power icon and stealth. Stealth's good. And you can make him a wolf and give him intimidate and plus two strength. What do you think? Uh, right now, um, just what I've seen on the on the community page, people talking about, he ha he does fit into uh, maybe like a crossing deck or uh, a brotherhood deck right now, but he definitely isn't uh, anything overwhelming. Um, definitely the wolf trait threw me off. Mm -hmm. I wanted a dire wolf. Yeah, that's what but... I was looking for. As soon as I saw that, I looked yeah. through all the cards to see if anything hit wolf, and it's all dire wolf. Yeah. Then I looked into the lore a little bit, and lore wise, he never actually, uh, you know, he never actually wargs into dire wolves. He's got regular wolves, so appreciate that on the, the lore Very perspective, thematic, I guess, you know. right? Yeah, so they stuck um, with the medic, but with mm -hmm. efficiency, um, I mean, right now I'm going at a, a two to three. For a rating uh, on the scale, sure, yeah. Scale. So we'll keep doing that as well. The 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 scale that we care about, but may, yeah. nobody else may care about. Uh, I think uh, from perspective of like the toolbox aspect of him. I mean, if you get him out, you can you can ambush him yeah. with uh, with um, what is his name? The the Wildling King guy. I can't remember the name. Mance Raider. Uh, Mance, yeah. and then also um, the new Val as well. Mm -hmm. uh, or actually, never mind. No. Excuse me, Val's four, so you can't. So you would okay. be able to do it with Mance, though. The Mance gives him ambush, yeah. which is cool if you're running wildlings. And with the Brotherhood Without Banners, that can yeah. be a cool thing. He um, works off a dollar, too, so yeah. you'll be able to draw a card. And the I like anytime you can choose what you need at the beginning of a phase. Like, it can be good, I think, if Absolutely. getting the icon you need or getting the keyword you need. Uh, I don't... I know this wouldn't ever work, but if he could have got renowned somehow, that would have been cool. But it wouldn't. It's not. It's not in the cards. Yeah, but. <laughs> not, not thematic with that. Yeah. So let's move on to our first star card. Uh, we have Bolt and Flare. It has three costs, and again, I guess you that shadow icon and the cost for the first time. Military intrigue icon for three strength. Ally and House Bolton. So ally key, ally trait means watch out because you know things will target those ally traits. And yeah, especially uh, Targ right now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I would I would say definitely uh, is is not a big specific because I see a lot of targs going 
away from Dario. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Like, there's like a lo- the location that hits Alice too, isn't there? There's another card that like it's, it's actually it's an event. It's an event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no one's it. really playing that, okay. so you don't have to worry about that. But I mean, he is a pretty juicy character for Dario. I mean, a three for three. Bicon, so. Yeah, and the the nice part is his little force interrupt there. So he shadows two, so you, you can pay one extra gold to shadows and flip him in a different phase. So that's one of the things that's important to know about the shadow mechanic is that while most of them tend to be higher, except for the beautiful card we'll see later, which is Jim <laughs> Slint, um, is that you'll pay a little more, but you don't have to pay it all at once. So you get that mid-challenge phase gold, or you get that gold from some other thing, or maybe even next turn. I mean, shadow doesn't have to happen the same turn you marshal it in shadow. So you get that kind of split of costs, which can be nice, especially for the extra effect. Uh, and then when the challenge phase is ends, you choose and kill a character with lowest printed cost. So, I don't know, uh, Chud Killer? <laughs> uh, I think he's going to synergize very well. Um, when Jesse Carpenter had his event a couple months ago, I, t- I had to Which take a Stark. It? Uh, it was his uh, birthday tourney okay, event okay. where it was based off like the Thrones War that they do in SoCal. Mm-hmm. Um, so everyone had to be part of a certain faction. I was part of Stark. So I did Stark Reigns, and I found a neat deck uh, from Italy that used the synergy of the Boltons. So I think this guy actually can... Um, synergize very well if you know which cards to pick off. That's a good point. You're right with the Chud. It's the easiest target to mm-hmm. see, right? But if you can pull things off with Roos and... That's what I was going to think. So if you can Glass like, Hearth, get yeah. it in a situation where maybe the lowest one is somebody they care about. It yeah. can never be higher than three, though, which is an Clearly. important thing to yeah. keep in mind. Because if... I guess the ties go... Who chooses in tie? So, I mean... Controller? He's going to... Yeah... You're going to be able to choose the, the other lowest one. Okay. strength. And it's the same thing as the... Um, the uh, knight, uh, House Fortnite. Yeah, House Fortnite. With it does the, like, yeah. low. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, Danny right now, um, I believe... No, yeah, never mind. It's printed cost. Sorry, knight is strength, so he's not quite the same. Mm-hmm. So you're right. Three is about the most you're going to get. The cannot be saved thing's nice, though. Like, yeah. that, that's a key part on here. And, you know, you read through Thrones cards a lot, and good players... We'll look at that and see, like, that is that gives a card more than one merit. I mean, it cannot be Great. saved means that it means a lot. And so, like, plots like uh, Valar, 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 Morgalis, yeah. uh, you can save that. But, like, Wildfire, no, no go, right? Exactly. So yeah. they have different values based on that, depending. Yep. But a guy's probably, for me, like a two or three, depending on the deck. But if you have that Roost deck together, you definitely value him a lot higher because you build around him, right? Exactly. I, I put him at a three because, again, he's a three strength mm-hmm. by con, so you're getting challenges out of him. And then his Force Interrupt is just... Um, it's, a, it's just an after effect that can set up things like mm-hmm. Marched and uh, exactly. other maneuvers, uh, especially, I mean, Ramsey. We can't forget about Ramsey no. and, <laughs> and what he can do, too. So. Yeah, that's true. All right, our next card is, uh, is a very interesting one. I think this one caused buzz for me, at least, because it has a very interesting like first sentence, which hasn't been on a lot of cards ever. I mean, the weirdest other one you have is immune to card effects, which is Pleasure Bark, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. like, okay, cool, I guess <laughs> this is just here forever now. It's never going Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a two-cost uh, location called Northern Armory. It's a loyal Stark card. It's got the North keyword, if that you know floats your boat at all. But it is a Stark location, which means that for the cards that came out in the last pack, or maybe the pack before, uh, that get that be like or if you only control stark locations you're golden right correct you're hitting on something that seems to be a theme that's going to be pushed by uh danny and the other um uh testing uh the stark is looking to just synergize with all stark Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. pushing out the neutrals possibly pushing away from fealty and maybe going to wars to come and things like that yeah uh so it's got the Northern Armory cannot stand. And I was talking to Aaron about this offline, and we were like, what does this mean? And I was like, he said, literally means no effect in the game can stand this card. Like, uh, unless you can blank it or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's like sit. a four-car combo someone yeah. put up if you want to get this thing to stand. I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, you can Frozen Solid it, but then it stands and you do nothing until you can get Frozen Solid off, so that requires, like, you know, like, con- uh, confiscation or Condition something. Condition removal. Weapons, yeah. yeah. Um, so, they, but the nice part is that you can kneel it to choose and stand a character. Yeah. Uh, it does have the plus one gold icon, and then this is the most important part that's not there, which is it's not limited. Exactly. So set up three of them, and or don't. I mean, set up one of them, but it doesn't matter because you don't have to choose one other limited card here because it's not limited. Yeah, so. and we won't make the mistake on you know presuming that this is going to be 
super bad. I'm gonna go with the two to three because I don't know how it's first pack. Mm-hmm. It's the first time we're getting unlimited. 1.0, they were running about 12 economy cards to get a deck synergizing and going. We'll see if that will help with 2.0. So I'm going to play it safe and say 2 to 3. Yeah. But typically, star cards, they typically usually get to be undervalued yeah. uh, because it seems that other factions just get better. So we'll see how it goes throughout this cycle. This standing a star character thing is like not something to like shove off. Uh, that's a big deal. No. And for two, for two... For the getting the plus gold icon is like yeah. is good, and the two mana or the man I'm keeping the wrong game two gold for uh, two gold for this is is right on point I think for like what it should cost for what it does, and if it yep. stood if it could stand it should be way it would more be than that. yeah it would be intense, but yeah. uh, I mean I'll I'll, gr- I'll grant you that the when you run into Stark Rush don't you know don't, don't underestimate yes. that card. Uh, I'm I'm at three as well. I think playing it safe is okay for me because. Uh, I got confused when I saw that card first as more casual player. I was like, this seems so dumb because I use it once and it's done. I like things that have, you know, Multiple. long-term exactly. game effects. The the limited lack of limited there, or the lack of limited there is actually what seems to be most important. And good on setup. So. Yep, good on setup. Now, probably what is the one of the coolest cards, I think, in the set. Just from a perspective of, like, thinking about what it can do in faction synergy. Uh, you have another, our second shadow card, Scheming Septon. This one actually is kind of cool because it like feels shadowy. Like yep. I don't know, it, it, it embraces that shadow. It does theme. embrace it. Uh, it's a two cost um, intrigue power character with two power. It's got the seven trait, which is kind of interesting. I didn't notice that until actually just now, but that could mean a lot if yes. you decide to play it in that kind of deck. That I don't know if that deck's good yet, but it seems like it's getting to a head, or it could get to a head in the next cycle or two, which. Would be really cool, I think. Yeah, after Jerry Crane won um, Disaster at Crash Thurs, and I got to watch his Faith Militant Stark deck, you really you undersell that one power it gets every turn mm-hmm. because it, it doesn't seem quick, but it's quicker than you think. <laughs> and Tyrell doesn't need any more, you know, quicker effects to gain power. And then <laughs> it also has that attachment that basically gives you the seven trait. Yep. And then also you have that new neutral attachment that you will give another guy a seven. Yep. So I think out, uh, I think that's just another form. Not that Tyrell needs it, but it's just another agenda Tyrell can just make even better. Mm-hmm. And this guy really uh, will help out in that. Interestingly enough, though, loyal, which is probably more of a balancing thing than anything else. So I don't think. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'll go into the how efficient this guy is. So let's, let's read it first. Yeah, so go ahead, shadow yeah. two, so you pay two and then you flip them for two. Challenge action, draw a card, gain two gold, and place scheming septin on top of your deck once per phase. Once per phase. Yep. Per phase. Okay. I'll, exactly. I'll stop saying yep, repeating yep, that over yep. and over again. That's very important actually. <laughs> so most people most that's good players Mace has is per exactly, phase, right? Okay. Exactly. Carry on, sorry. No, you're right. <laughs> and most most good players that are efficient have already seen this and they're already looking at not only can you just marshal him for two, because his challenge action has nothing to do with getting out of shadows. He's he's a bicon. He's two strength. You're going to get a challenge out of him first, which is always good. Mm-hmm. Uh, the loyal thing is even more ridiculous because of breaking ties. Yeah. So that, oh, that's a good point. I didn't yeah. think about that. And so from the vanilla perspective, as we look at sometimes in Magic, you'd say, what does this card do what I pay for it without having anything on it, right? This is a 2-2 two, a two, two for... A two bicon for two, like yep. that's good. That's exactly. that's a solid. It's got a good trait on it. It's solid. Loyal. Chud. Yeah, solid, straight up blank card, but it's not blank. So <laughs> the loyalty matters now. And then of course, let's go into his challenge action. Let's see, let's see what you're gonna net worth off of him. So a lot of people are saying, well, you're basically trading the two gold for two gold, sure. But we all know Tyrell. By the time this guy gets out and running, you're gonna have flea bottom out. You're going to have the high tower out. You're going to have mace out. I didn't even think in the flea bottom combo because yeah. you could pull them back out. Then you can pop pull them, them back out and then exactly. keep, it, keep it going. And if, it's like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> yeah. And then with James Walmsley, Walmsley's deck that just recently won Euros, you're looking to probably put uh, Old Town in that deck now. So his net worth will be, at the end of the day, three gold, two cards, and two power. Mm-hmm. Mace trigger, Old Town trigger. There's you get two gold from right? him, yeah. high tower, gold. You're getting a card from Hightower, and you're getting a card from him. Yeah. And that's an insane swing mm-hmm. in one turn. 
And then on top of what you said, it's limit once per phase. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'll have to give this guy a five. Yeah, I agree. Five, right? And then, like, that... Okay, so he just listed, like, three cards you need to make that happen. But those three cards are not actually, like, a normal wombo combo of three cards that you yeah. need to actually un, 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 or stand that Stark location. Yeah. <laughs> These are three cards you run in any kind of, like, really competitive uh, Tyrell deck. Because Mace is money, yeah. right? High tower money... Like, it's hard to not want to put those things in. And even, you yeah. look at uh, Wansley's deck, and he, even he was saying, like, the good stuff is there, right? Yeah. And you look at the second deck, and I even think the second place deck had High Tower in it. And yeah. Mace was in it, I think. Wasn't uh, it? No, was it I don't think he okay, was okay. in it. Um, but High Tower was still in it, because High Tower is efficiency, right? It's efficiency, like, so. exactly. And one, one last thing about this, too, is um, he's... Those cards you're talking about, they're not hard to... They're not hard to find because some people may run Pleasure Barge, which is going to get you those cards mm -hmm. you need to search. But what I found with Wamsley deck that um, reinvigorated my liking to the Old Town Informer is just Shadow is just going to give you another trigger for the Old Town Informer. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to be searching for those cards. And I've played probably 10 games with this deck so far, and it's not hard to... By turn plot two or three to get down to thirty cards in your deck with <laughs> That's the old insane. town of like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So this guy, he everyone knows it probably deep down. So we're just saying what people are thinking right now. The guy is just super efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, next card we got is the opposite end of yep. I would say like you know if you put this good of a card in for the other title card you kind of got to bounce yep. it out I guess. <laughs> um, so it's uh, called Marjorie's Influence. It's a one-cost card. It's a condition attachment, so targetable by some maesters and other things yep. like that. It's terminal, which it sucks. And its action says, while attached character is participating in challenge, kneel the influence and pay one gold to stand character removed from challenge. Standard Tyrell yep. removed from combat fair stuff. Which so. we haven't seen a deck, and it seems like there has come a point where there's a pinnacle of the synergizing, and no one's done anything. So, I mean, it's essentially the high garden synergizing. You know, you got the yeah. Sept and Nysteria, you got Offer of a Peach, the high garden, now this. And how many do you need? Exactly. I <laughs> don't if, know. And even if you do need it, are you picking this card? Because this you, card costs you, like, I guess Hightower costs you money too, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, it, it's just no one is going for the synergy right now for Tyrell. No one is just pushing someone out of a challenge and just keeping away. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's there, though. Maybe the Tyrell Conclave would, like, to start synergizing that stuff, but I haven't I haven't tried. Hopefully, there are people out there that are doing it, but I just haven't had time to it, really try. The, these effects telegraph themselves so much that yeah. it's hard to do something where you're like, I'm gonna put my opponent in a position where maybe I kneel them out with Tyrell because what I do is I force them to commit, and then I always have the option to pull back. Pull but back. Yeah. because it's so telegraphed in Thrones, is a game that like likes surprise but doesn't thrive on it, like L5R does. Where yeah. L5R, you're doing conflict stuff, and you're like, I don't even know what's happening anymore. The conflict deck is conflated in my view of this game. But this game likes its surprises but doesn't overdo it, and this effect just telegraphs too much for me. I it, it seems cool to have a deck that can like. Just swing in, and you're like, yeah. psych, I'm not doing that. But no one, just, I don't know. It seems very play roundable. Yeah, the only time I've ever seen that effect used most was uh, bannering to crack in, and you're using your long ships and mm. stealth and things like that. But I, I completely agree with you. Um, I would rather play to hand. Um, that is the that is probably the best strategy in Thrones right now. If you can do that, if a faction can play to hand, then you try to do that over. Yeah. And I think Tyrell can do that pretty well right it, now. It reminds me a lot of like when I started playing. Uh, like when I went to my first regionals, I was running the like the Greyjoy deck that you run when like two years ago. That was yeah. like solid, right? Solid, and yeah. This reminds me of like raiding long ships where it doesn't do anything. It sits there. And your opponent has to think about it. Yep. And to me, that was really dumb from a card design perspective because I was like, "This card's cool, I guess," but I never, t I never kneel it. I just all I have to do is keep it here, and my opponent has to play around play around the rest it, of the exactly. game. And that doesn't, that's not really fun yeah, for me. No. <laughs> uh, but it maybe is for you. I don't want to like tell you that your deck's wrong or whatever. But yeah. it's just something I'd rather like, you know. It, exactly. I mean, it, it can synergize with the next faction we're about to talk with, mm -hmm. which is Night's Watch. But with that card, I'm just going to give it a two. Just yeah. to, it does what it needs to do if you build that deck, but I haven't seen that deck. <laughs> I, I don't even know like if two is right, because yeah. it's not even the most efficient version of that card. True. And so, I don't know. I'm going to say a one or a 1.5. I don't know what our skill is. I can go in decimals, because I made this up, but I'm yeah. copying it. So, <laughs> 1.5 for me. 
Uh, our next card, though, is probably... I read it and I got really excited. Uh, mainly because it's an Intrigue Icon on a Night's Watch card. <laughs> it's a six shadow, cost is Jaina Slint. Uh, uh, intrigue and power and a five, uh, five strength. Um, Non-loyal and unique. The ally trade, of course. The ally trade is you know another thing to keep an eye out for, but not something that you have to be scared of, I guess, as part of what we said earlier. Yeah. Shadow is zero. So this is... Uh, what is the other one? The only other one? Yeah, okay, there's two cards that are Shadow Zero in this pack, and this is one of them. Uh, the only, the downside, though, is that, uh, you know, because you're seeing, like, wow, that's money, and now I can play them from Shadows for free. That's kind of cool. So you can pay two to play them instead of the six cost that's up there. Uh, but after it uh, comes out of Shadows, you have to sacrifice a Night's Watch character. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's... It's real efficient. Big body for zero, and you're sacrificing a Night's Watch character. Surprise intrigue icons. Exactly. Is cool. <laughs> He's non loyal too, so I'm sure there's some, uh, you know, um, synergizing with some banners mm -hmm. uh, if you are still wanting to run banners instead of mono. Um, and then the sacrifice Night's Watch character, there's plenty of Chud Night's Watch characters that you want to get rid yeah. of. And then, I mean, the, yeah. the deck right now, it just won a regional recently in Oklahoma at Covenant. I mean, Builders... Builders, builders may, is back again? Yeah, oh. apparently. But uh, Builders may may <laughs> want this guy, too. Um, I just think, overall, just from a perspective, that he's just a fish and body. So. I, will, I guess I will point out, based off the fact that you just mentioned Builders and the next card we're going to look at cares yeah. about that, he does not have any of the keywords no that keywords. Night's Watch wants, which I think is a balance. It's got to be a balancing thing. It has thing. to be, like, yeah. You can't put any of the cool Nice Watch stuff on him that's going to affect the steward or, you know, the Maybe ranger. too efficient yeah. if you do that. And so, just an ally. Yeah. Uh, and, like, thematically, I guess that makes sense because he's kind of a jerk. Yeah, so. he used to be a, a Lannister <laughs> right. guy, you know, and then sent to the wall. But my, my rating on that card is probably, like, uh, four, depending on the deck, maybe three, four, because I like paying two for a thing that usually costs six. Yeah, I would go four just by pure efficiency. And, yeah, I don't mind sacrificing Night's Watch. I think people are uh, things, some people are getting caught up on that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you're not going to be doing that every turn. It's one turn and he's out, and so just replace your Chud or, like, you know, exactly. steal one of their guys if it's... Or I guess you can't do that, because like, they get Night's Watch traits. Is there a stealer that gives a Night's well, Watch? Well, there is that stealing that deck, account. and then there is that attachment, that zero-cost attachment will give. I mean, Wombo it's going to be a Wombo cool. combo, but, <laughs> I mean, there are... there are. I'm sure we're not thinking of it right now. There's going to be someone who's going to find a, a good sacrifice. Yeah. For that. A good outlet, yeah. sure. A good outlet for him. Uh, so our next one is Fresh Recruits. Um, it's a three-cost event. It's loyal to Night's Watch. It's got an action. It says, search your deck for a ranger character, a builder character, and a steward character. Reveal them and add them to your hand and shuffle your deck. So um, from a perspective of uh, tutoring, like this is a tutor, pure tutor card, right? Um, usually tutors will search for a card, right? Yep. Um, if you, you don't even have to try really hard to build around this card to make it hit two things. And that, to me, makes, makes me feel like this is a very money card in a lot of Night's Watch decks that it's going to be in. Because yep. pulling two of them out, even though you do have to show, that kind of sucks, but that's more of like a making sure you're not cheating thing yep. as opposed to exactly. like a, a like real balance thing. But I think paying three gold to, to pull two out of your entire deck is, seems really good to me. Absolutely. Uh, tutoring is a word I love since I was in Star Wars Decipher. You could tutor your whole deck if you wanted to, <laughs> and it just made the games more skill capped and uh, also quicker at the same time yeah. if the skill w level wasn't equal. So this this card I get excited about just because of the tutoring and like you said, I mean it says search your deck. So you're going your entire deck. Yeah. Most tutor effects in this game hit 10, 10 yep. cards off the top, five Most cards off, six cards off the top. Your entire deck is crazy. Crazy. And it's loyal, so it looks like it wants to synergize mm -hmm. with some uh, main main house um, Night's Watch. And then on top of that, you're getting all three. So mm -hmm. we could say this may foreshadow um, where the Night's Watch will start coming together, which I know um, in the book-wise, that's what Jon Snow's trying to do. Yeah. He's trying to get all the Night's Watch all together to, to, to fight yeah. against the uh, oncoming uh, others and things like that. Um, the White Walkers, as is known in the show. Yeah. So I, I can see that this is going to start synergizing those traits together, which is kind of important um, 
thematic wise. We'll mm-hmm. see how good it is in the Game of Thrones card game. I actually like that you mentioned that, even from a Game of Thrones card game perspective, because what it feels to me is like they're like, hey, we understand Builders is really good, but like look at this card that now can tutor different types. So like, you know, it's okay to throw stewards and tier builders deck now if you can handle it, or maybe yep. don't build builders and just put the builders in that want to help you get the wall out and tutor that guy out. Exactly. Like, cards like this to me make it feel like they're trying to say insinuate that maybe you can possibly build with more than just a one trait keyword. One trait, yeah. And our trait, not keyword. Um, but I don't know. It feels like they're trying to like pull us away from that because I, I played Builders last regionals and I just felt terrible. And so like <laughs> we, as we all should. <laughs> yeah, and like we ended up. I don't know if it was Dom and I, or, or if it was some. I can't remember. It was Luke and I. Uh, we got into a builder via Builders game and we went to time, of course, because that's what you do. And the only reason that I won is because I got one extra dominance power early on. Like oh, that yeah. was it. And so it was forty five pl- or fifty five plus minutes of sitting there passing and. That's not healthy. Like, yeah. like, and no deck should be having that happen. I don't know. I don't think that's healthy. You can take that for what you will. Comment <laughs> about it and let me know how you feel like that's healthy. <laughs> Send a message, Jesse Carpenter, who just lost the regional recently. With builders? Yeah, no, oh, against okay. builders. He oh. he was playing uh, Wamsley's deck. So, oh, he, ask Wamsley's him how deck he lost the builders. Yeah, ask him how mm. he fell on that one. Yeah, that'd he be beat he beat him earlier in the tournament, the but in the champion, yeah. yeah okay. in the, in the championship, he lost. So. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I like that they're trying to incentivize yeah. building. Like, rangers are great. Like, build rangers and builders. You don't have to, like, yeah. just lock down. I, I like it on the... Last thing I'll say is I like it on the... I'll give it a, a four just because of the tutoring mm-hmm. effect. That's me. I'm in the same boat. Like, I like I'm not going to say five because you're, you're going to have to, bu- you're gonna have to like, yep. really make it your deck good to hit all three. Yep. You're going to have to think about it. But, but uh, I will say my favorite nice watch decks are the recruitment decks. Mm-hmm. So I'm not big on and the it's defending. got the word recruits on it, exactly. so that's why. Here you go. Yeah, I like it. So. <laughs> all right, we got our first Baratheon card here. It's three cost. Uh, it's an Intrigue and a Power Icon with three strength. It's Shadow Priestess. It's got that beautiful Relord trait. Cool. Uh, it's got the ally trait as well, though. Um, a lot of allies in this one. Or am I just like... No, I think yeah, there are. There's a few. Quite There's a bit. There's two, yeah, three so far out of the f- three factions yeah. we've talked about. <laughs> um, and then you got uh, After Shadow Priest comes out of Shadows. So this is the first one we've seen that actually has a come out of Shadows effect, yeah. I believe. Um, choose a Neil character without attachments. So there's a bunch of rule stuff here that we can talk about in a second. But overall, this card seems cool. It's got the Relore trait. I, I think it's a, a great card. Um, three for three. Bicon, um, Intrigue and Power, which is great for Baratheon. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, you're spinning five, but, man, uh, having another Neil, um, specifically you're probably going to mostly use this in the challenge phase. You would probably want to use Mel in the, you know, small Mel so, in the Marshall phase. Yeah, is, and that, then, is that core Mel? Small Mel is core Yeah, okay. core Mel. Um, and then you can use... You know this one in the um, challenge phase, and I'm uh, I'm pretty high on the Neil right now, just at, because at first player championship I saw Jesse take his Bear Wars to come, and Force March is definitely a thing right now, okay. and uh, just getting that synergy and she'll is that only the help. That skips the new uh, no, oh, okay. uh, Wither and Cold Force is that, but okay. Force March you just opponent has to kneel a military icon, okay. and you can keep repeating that if you have a military icon. Oh, so you just okay. kneel your Chud. They kneel their military icon. Then, okay, interesting. And then I just watched him go to town with like Stannis Calvary and just keep people know. <laughs> and so. then you're like, well, I don't get a Stannis. Yeah, anything. yeah, I don't get anything. So, what I was reading about this card uh, earlier was that, the sh- and this is important because this is has to do with that coming to shadows. Thing. Yep. Coming to shadows does not trigger uh, small mills. No. Nope. Effect. But playing this card does, of course, because you're playing a lore card. So keep that in mind when you're talking, thinking about building with this card and when you're going to use it and timing-wise during, you know, like you were saying, challenges versus marshalling. Coming out of Shadows, she's going to get... The Shadow Priest is going to get her effect from the coming out of Shadows, but not trigger Mel. That's important, but it's, you know, more archetypal of the Shadow thing than it is of anything else. So just keep that in mind. You are, When you're putting into Shadows, Fantasy Flight loves doing this. It's a very specific set of words... And that is exactly what it means. It is not marshalling, so it is not marshalling a ruler character. It and is, you're not playing. Yeah, you're not playing it. Because that's a vent. Yeah. You're playing a vent, yeah. And so just keep that in mind with shadow cards, or you're going to probably be in the middle of a game and get real frustrated or confused about why things aren't happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So. And I think that's also why she'll be efficient coming out of shadows mm-hmm. is because she, you can uh, forego a Solis on a withering cold churn. You won't lose uh, another... Um, 
challenger, a possible challenger, because you'll be able to bring her out in the challenge phase. Mm -hmm. So I think, like um, Kyle said, think about the situations where you're going to want to use her. I'm pretty high on the challenge phase, but I'm not saying that's the only time that you're going to want to do it. And the best part, again, like we said with Shadows earlier, is you do not have to pay that three the same turn you put it in Shadows. Like, split it up if you don't need to pay it. Or, I mean, wait, you don't have to play it just because it's in Shadows. Like, you could have a stack of Shadow cards that was, like, 15 high if you wanted to. I mean... Follow your heart. Like. I, th I think that um, there is going to be an interesting interaction with Dragonstone Castle. And if you're playing a low-cost Barra and you're running dual and you're keeping one of their seven costs um, locked down, locked down and then you wanna you wanna after you know standing phase you wanna kneel their other seven cost or whatever, um, you kind of will put them in a pickle of they're gonna have to choose one to kill yeah. type of thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's a good point. That's yeah, a really instead of them point. just getting a, a kneel and then they just choose you know a character to to kill, you're gonna put them in which you know do I want to bail on mm -hmm. Asher at this point and things like that. Um, I may not be uh, saying it correctly or. or um, putting out you know the best options but I think there's something there uh, that I've seen especially with like Solis decks where they'll force the opponent to into like to bad, dual in bad situations situa yeah. yeah bad dual situations yeah. uh, one thing is important to note and I know I've read it this way but I think this is important is that last two two words which is without attachments so you know there's another th play thing like make yeah. sure you're paying attention make to sure attachments that. <laughs> because while some people don't play them i know there's like the crudgel decks now yeah. and they can get kind of weird because you're usually you're used to not seeing a ton of stuff you have like oathbringer in some decks and you have like yeah. dawn in other decks but yeah. be careful because you might I, I do it and i'm not like high caliber and i will make those mistakes so dragon no slave is a card now with new danny so that's why people are starting to put more positive yeah, attachments exactly in, and that's what's going to affect this and this is another thing that i think fantasy fight was doing I th i've read this on i think the pack review but it's really important is that they're building cards that make people want to play positive attachments yeah. which is cool because there's a lot of fun ones in there that you could build around if you really think you know a lot of times what we do and i won't stand on the soapbox for too yeah. long is tend to knock cards out because they're never useful yeah. and never look at them again which is the bad part so exactly coming back and bringing cards back into your pool like you know like this like fishing net that's a card that may not see a lot of play but don't forget about it right yep. i mean there's things there still correct so, so we'll just give her i'm gonna give her a three yep. she's just pure it's all a three yeah i'm stepping off the soapbox now <laughs> uh the next one we got is stormland fiefdoms a two cost location and it's loyal in uh baratheon it's got the westeros keyword I don't know if that means anything yet, but, you know. Not not so much okay. right now. Uh, it says, Neil Stormlands Fiefdom to move one power from character faction to its owner's faction card. And it's got the little uh, plus one gold icon on it. So, you know, second and possibly start of a cycle of maybe non-limited plus one gold locations that we might yeah. see in this cycle. This is your new, this is the new way of going for um, gold locations. Mm -hmm. um, so... They're People are saying like this over Rose Road, and I'm like, man, I can see it depends. Like, I mean, if you, depending on what you pull during setup, yeah. like, you might want to hit this instead of a Rose if Road. If you want to stay right now, we're gridlocked in second edition with nine. Nine limits is typically what we go with. So if you want to stay with nine, yeah, you, I was thinking most likely so if some of these are good enough, I will take out Rose Roads mm -hmm. because, just because of the, uh, the option of setup. But others, they may push it to 12, like yeah. I said. You may just want to add one or two of these. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just we were talking earlier about it. I mean, this uh, can uh, affect your opponent as well. So you may you may find a reason to uh, move one power from a character um, or location to uh, the person's faction card, and that may be in situations where a person's just defending. And they're really collecting renown, renown and mace triggers and things like that. And you, there was you can't like that Cersei deck for a while yeah. that was doing like like intrigue spam or intrigue spam to discard to get power. And it was yeah. like the the red viper with Cersei type of yeah. wombo combo. And like this is little, but it's still helpful. I mean, we just talked earlier about how that faith militant deck was getting one power turn. Taking yeah. away one power turn can can stop a combo turn a combo from winning that turn. Yep. And then if you have a whole other turn to, to defeat it. And this is interesting too because. I wonder if you build Faith Militant around this card. Exactly. That's right. what I was thinking is that this card will go with Faith Militant. Um, that's the easiest synergy I see. Yeah. And that's, then that's, also that's Storm, nice. Storm's, yeah. <laughs> and Storm's End is the next easiest I see. What's uh, Storm's End do? Where you just move a power off a of faction. Uh, oh, okay. And you split it. You actually get two power. 
but those two power have to go onto a character. Oh, okay, that's right. This I actually so see you can do that with, with the painted table too. Yeah, like, right. So you can multiply it, and then you can just move that that power back to your faction card with with these. I think I'm at like a two yeah. or three for this card. Uh, it it is built it around. It can be pretty cool, yeah. but like. I don't know if it goes in every Baratheon. Deck. No, I'm going with a three oh, just because it's better than the Stark card right now. I see. Yeah, the, the Stark one. You think so? I think so. Just by right now, the the way to win this game is 15 power. <laughs> oh, and, really? Is that yeah, even, that's how you win. So no alt win conditions. And I, I, like I said, I can see like that Faith Melton is not something to sleep on against yeah. Baratheon, where Stark. Its power is going to go a lot, a lot of times on their character, and to use that Stark location, you're going to, you're going to kneel some characters. Mm -hmm. Valdo Harris is a thing right now for Stark, so yeah, seriously, that's going to hurt, it right? Hurts, Especially yeah. when you're doing like Stark unique stuff. So yeah. that, that's my thinking of why I'm going to put it above the Stark location. All right, we're getting into Lannister now, and I, there's some funny comments about this card being able to be played alongside yep. of <laughs> like the other one, yep. like clones and yep. alternate timelines. Uh, six cost, uh, military icon, eight strength, Sir Robert Strong. Uh, Kingsguard and Knight. So, for thematic purposes, Robert Strong is the spoilers. I guess I'm not gonna. I won't say. I won't say spoilers. Yeah. Robert Strong is a cool character because it's another character that's been killed. So yep. that's all I'll say. And I won't mention the other guy you can play it with. <laughs> uh, he's got Shadows Five. So you're paying uh, one again. One extra gold is typically one. Uh, typically seems to be in this pack the the amount you pay to that's do the gonna Shadows be the cost, things. Yeah. Um, and after it comes out, uh, you choose and kill a kneeling character with five cost or lore or five power or lore. No, five costs or lower. Okay. Yep, five so. costs or lower. So, Danny, looking at you right now, Danny. <laughs> that's the one that's the biggest one. But there's plenty of other good five cost characters that Robert Strong can uh, react to. And so I know a lot of guys in the Italian meta are really big on them. Most of them are like Lanny fans, but I do see a good purpose. And then also, this is the only card I would mark on the art. Mm -hmm. The art, I think, is amazing. Oh, right? It looks yeah. so well done. Like yeah, it's, it's He's got well the done. sweet Knights, uh, Knights Guard, Kingsguard armor on. Yeah, I agree. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him a three. Um, I think he has his uh, purpose, and it's nice to see uh, a decent landing card coming out. It's been a while. I guess I'm a little... I just want to say like 2.5, because yep. like I'm not sure where it goes. Like It's kind of cool, and it's but it costs a lot, and... I don't. I'm thinking of other seven cost things you want to play in Lannister. Yep. And I mean, you got like Tywins, and you got your Circes, and like stuff. I think there's Circes six, but you have cards that cost this much, and I don't know. I'm just. I want. I want to wait to see somebody do something with it first, and then I'm completely fine redoing that yeah. evaluation. But to me, it just sounds like another kill card in like Lannister, and absolutely. Uh, I don't know. It's it's really cool thematically, and I just don't know that I think it's like super impactful yet. And yeah. Feel free to ring me in the comments because again, like, I could be completely wrong, yeah. but I'm gonna like two point five. So yeah, middle of road for me. Yeah, like you said, I'm waiting for someone to do some, yeah. something with it. I I'm not a huge Laney player either, so yeah, I don't me see. Either. I don't see it. You know, yeah, like I don't, exactly. I don't see it. I don't see it. This next card though, I think is super fun. Like I'm a <laughs> fan of like random crazy stuff happening in the middle of the Game of Thrones. Any any game actually, but like so you don't want to play me if you like want to do something and do it as like the top level because like I will purposely do things that yeah. mess stuff up. So. Uh, <laughs> So this is the first shadow card that has the dash cost. This is all explained in the, the handout thing, so don't worry about you know getting confused about what dash means. It basically means it has no cost or cost zero yeah, for purposes. It, yeah. it will have no cost zero. That is what X equals. X yeah, equals you're zero. right. So sorry. dash will not equal zero. So that is that will be important mm -hmm. down the road. Um, it says beneath the bridge of dreams, and it's a loyal Lannister event. It's shadow zero too. So this is another one of this is the other one that's shadow zero. Yeah. And this one's interesting because this one is one of the few shadow cards that you don't well, you, like you're not using an action to play. You're using the interrupt to play, which yep. isn't technically an action in an action window. It's an effect that happens on top of an action. Yeah. Um, so when you choose a plot card to reveal. Uh, in this plot phase, instead shuffle your used pile into your plot deck and choose a plot card to reveal at random until the end of the card. Increase gold value on that by two. Yeah, and, and that that's interesting. So, like, Martel would never. You could never. You this can never even be a Martel, but this would be like the antithesis of what you wanted to do in like Martel. You want to have as many plots in your used pile as possible. I think most of the time, right? Like, yeah, the, this is definitely the opposite of Martel. It's like the, it's just thinking wise. You yeah. can never play them together. It's just one of those things where you're like, why? Like that that those those decks would. Where a fact, yeah. Why would a faction want 
just to you know do a casino with their plot while another faction is trying to build as many plots into their use pile yeah i get what you're saying yeah this is definitely something that uh you're gonna have to build your plot deck for i've already seen the comments uh some good comments in the uh community um you know you're looking at false springs you're looking at heads on spikes yeah right <laughs> and if anything that lancer's taught us throughout the years that the casino can just win you games. Yeah, that's what like jumping lines is all about. Yeah. Like Gregor is the perfect example, and this is like the Gregor. And then on top of that, heads on spikes is a thing. And what I found actually in this game is uh, more and more uh, variants tends to just work on the side of the person who wants, who uses it the most, Embraces who just increases yeah, exactly, yeah. who just increases variance so much that it tends to work out yeah. for them in the end. But again. You will have those days where it just hit. doesn't hit. And there's no match play in Thrones. It's one and done for one that match. Done, so exactly. keep that in mind because you might hit that game where you don't yeah. get anything. And it's brutal. But no. I think the increase, increase, increase the pot, uh, the, the goal value by two is kind of cool. So you can start playing things that may not met, net you enough, like things like heads and all this where you're getting like lower goal values for good effects and now you're yeah. getting good goal values for good effects and i'm already thinking the the most recent deck uh laney crossing uh that ran Tarion's chain which i'm a big fan of i like uh increasing that heads on spikes you know mm -hmm. getting four heads on spikes a game instead of two is <laughs> yeah. a lot better yeah. for the variants and it does win you games but uh i'm i'm thinking like reinforcements this is going to be great for uh, you, so you can start really playing some war plot decks, Tyrion's Chain, and mm -hmm. using this. That's so I see point. a lot of synergy that can happen. Just need someone brave enough to build it. It's it's interesting to me too because as soon as you play this, you now have access to all your plots again. Yep. Because and that's really something not to scoff at, especially when you've already used things like maybe you've already used of your Valar and you need to clear again or like you do you did something that you, you normally can do once a game. So like. Like, Wars to Come is letting us put multiple plots in the deck, or more plots in the deck, right? This card, for nothing, for zero costs, can put all of the things that you'd want to use again back into your yep. plot deck. So, not something to just write off no. that part of it. And especially, you, you mentioned it, if you want to go back to jumpers, you, you may want your resets to come back in, like you said. You may not care about the cards on the on the ground because you're using your jumper events you're probably going to run isle ravens and recycle that stuff oh back God, in so good um so that's an interesting deck idea I'm not saying it may be a tier two tier 1.5 yeah, deck sure. but <laughs> uh it will utilize this but i will have to again go middle of the road just because it's a casino card. i'm going four so specifically three. because i love the chaos that this card can induce into yeah. a game because Part of this game is knowing what your opponent's plots are and what they're going to play. And if you middle of the like plot three or four just shuffle a bunch of plots back in, you're like crap. Like yeah. I didn't get to see half their plot deck. Now I have to worry about the things I haven't. I've already seen coming out again. It's good so, psychology. Right? Yeah, it's like a lot it. of play that you're like. Yeah. I mean, half of the like you talked about this on Wars of Coming the other day. Like going from Grasshopper and Master, the last twenty five to fifty percent of that is all about knowing the game and the players. Like, and when you do things like that to randomize stuff. It starts to get so complex; it's hard to keep track of. And yeah. if you can keep track of it over your opponent, you're good. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you can keep, infer more of the game than they can, mm -hmm. you're in a good position. To win. This card has a lot of talk going on. Oh. Uh, loving this yeah, card right now. Uh, four cost char character. Uh, it's another shadow card. Military and power icon. So pretty standard for Greyjoy. Yep. Uh, three power is nighttime marauders. And so you have raider keyword or raider trait. So. Good on you for putting more raiders in, yeah, yeah. right? And we got pillage again, so pillage is important because Greyjoy loves pillaging, yeah. uh, especially for the effect that it gets. So Shadow 3, so you're again paying the one extra to put it out, which is going to be standard, it seems. Uh, after Nighttime Marauders comes out of Shadows, choose a card in an opponent's discard pile. That player reveals his or her hand and discards each card from it with the same printed cost as a chosen card. What? Like... <laughs> I mean, Ooh. I see you. You can like zero or one sweep people with this, like Ooh. to get all their events out of their hand. You could chud. You could get events and chuds at the same time if yep. you hit a one. Um, I mean, maybe you go for like what you're talking about the Stark stuff earlier. You hit, say like something high, and then you hit all their uniques. Like, oh my god! Start keeping stats <laughs> on the best cards in each faction, please, because this is what is going to help you get over that variance factor. I'm calling it right now. This card is a four for me. Yep. Um, just like the reasons we talked about with the last Laney card, pillage is variance, and it just works very well in this game. And <laughs> the, what I've seen 
with the Great Druid decks I'm playing, the more I synergize over Pillage, because that was what my Reigns of Casimir that I won the uh, store championship with, it just it, it just causes havoc with decks. Mm -hmm. And if you can Pillage more than they can keep up with, they start seeing the p uh, pieces and it goes into the discard pile and it just gets that psychological you know, defeat in them where they're like, I can't keep up. That's what I needed this turn. This I needed guy that. This is like scary. So if you know this guy exists and you're pillaging, yep. that's even scarier. So this is an effect that's common to lots of card games. This whole find a thing and then pull a bunch of things out that are equal to or that name or the cost or whatever, right? Yep. It's a very devastating effect if you hit it on the right turn. And the one thing we haven't mentioned yet that is probably the most one of the most important parts about this card, it says, uh, player reveals his or her hand. Which is like... Hand knowledge. Bah, yes, you pay five for that. Yes, you pay five for that. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you can. So I'm on four, too. Yeah, uh, and the, the biggest synergy, I'm sure people are already thinking, what's the, well, who has the best hand knowledge cards right now? Stag. Bear. Yeah. So you, 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 you better get, watch out. you get flames out. and yeah. like, you look, yeah. You better watch out with when you say Greyjoy Stag. That's going to be the new hand destruction. Yeah. You could even do Martell too because you have uh, Viper Eyes, but um, that's how great players Listen, are going to be playing this deck. Dude, is they're going to Kraken Stag already have so many synergies yeah. though? It's like yeah. they're already going to play those cards that guarantee them to net the most out of mm -hmm. this card right now. Yeah. So, and then you also have plots like False Spring. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you got to watch out for that stuff. So yeah, that guy's easily the four. Easily, like, yeah. Easily. Seize the initiative though. This is very similar to the. Uh, the Tyrell card combo in here. This one's a lot like lower in certain formats, I think. Like, CZ Initiative is cool. It's X cost, so zero if you don't if it's checking. X is the number of opponents you have, and as an interrupt, uh, when the marshaling phase ends, you become the first player. I love this effect, but I can see why nobody really thinks this is kind of that cool. I'm a fan of like, what have you done? Okay, I'm gonna react to that, then I'm gonna do something first, and that's kind of cool to me. But I don't. I have always had trouble pulling cards out of Greyjoy. Like, yep. so when I see the deck list and I'm trying to mess with it, like, Greyjoy is one of the hardest ones for me to, to like tech in my own kind of feel for because yep. it's just they're they used to be so, like, these are the cards you play, and if you go off of that, you get too much too much non controllable variance, right? So. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely gonna be for a deck. Uh, I'm looking to use this in like a warship deck. It's definitely gonna be. Um, a deck that wants to go second, sees what the player's doing, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna want to save this on your critical turns. So yeah. plot three, or maybe even plot four, when you're ready to win, or the opponent's ready to win, you can definitely yeah. uh, do that. And I also like this on um, a um, Rise of the Kraken turn. Yep. Hey, go first. Oh yeah, that's a really good play. Go first, let me see what you're gonna throw down. And then I'm going to take initiative, go first, <laughs> and try to mess you up as yeah, much as you yeah. can. I think it's like a two for me right now. Yeah. Just to see, like, two. it could, because it's got other competition. Like, what, I can't remember the name of the card now, but there's the other the other one cost uh, across the waves or something that does this in Greyjoy already, gives you extra initiative, like, does the rest you draw a card, and it's like, which one do you want to play? And I don't know. So I'm still deciding, but yeah. Uh, yeah, two for me. What do you got? Yeah, I'm going to stick with two, like you said. Uh, it's very scenario based, and it, to me, in my mind, it only has one real efficient move. And like I said, it's when you need to win or when you need to stop someone from winning. All right, we got our uh, we got our first Targaryen card here. We got four cost character is another shadow card with an intrigue and power icon with three strength. Aegon Targaryen. This card confused me thematically because I was like, "What is happening here?" But we'll go into that in a sec. We got the Lord trait, so that's really important for a lot of yep. cards. Uh, Shadow 3, and after Aegon Targaryen enters play, search your deck for an army or mercenary card, put that card into play. If it's still there at the end of the uh, the phase, you put, pop it back into your hand. So this is a great tutor effect, just like we saw yeah. on the on the Night's Watch card. Um, paying 5 for this guy seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. Uh, plus you get that free army or mercenary. Looking through on Thrones DB armies and mercenaries, there's... There's like probably like seven good targets for this card that you can mix and match factions for. I mean, you Absolutely. always have Unsullied, which is always a solid, you know, pull, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, I mean, the the clear synergy, uh, we're just going to say it just because it needs to be said, is Dario and Second mm -hmm. Sons. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, that's going to be the ones you go after. I, I played uh, a guy last night who used this card to effect. Um, 
it wasn't as devastating as I thought it was gonna be um, because you know a timely nightmares uh, can stop Dario from pulling yeah. that ally away from you I was playing Tyrell so I had a lot of allies out um, and then on top of that um, you know Dario's going back to hand so I mean if you're playing too many cards that are only staying within that phase Tar can just all of a sudden have Fall no apart, board. Right? Exactly, it can have no board, yeah. and it'll be tough. Because you like you lose all you lose your skeleton, you lose your arms, you can't do anything. Yeah. So, uh, so it's really good if you're looking to uh, get characters out and you're you're prepping a reset yeah. for your slaver port bay and stuff like that. I love the tutor. I love that you can get his effect. Either I believe either from shadows or playing. Um, yeah, uh, if somehow you can play him uh, in the uh, challenge phase. Um, that's where he's going to be the most efficient. Yeah, Otherwise, I true. mean, you do a marshalling, the guy's going to go back at the that's end of the right, marshalling right. phase, unfortunately. Which is still technically a tutor, but it's not really the way you want to play it. No. Um, you're going to have to use shadows. Yeah, have to use shadows, so. you got to do such shadows. So uh, I'm, I'm on like a three for this guy because I think that that's pretty sweet. Um, the just the tutor thing and getting it in your hand. I love the toolbox nature of this. So exactly. like you play, you play him. Uh, out of shadows, and you get to pull what you need. You don't have to pull, and and you can build maybe build your toolbox of army mercenaries around what you might need to react to again. You know, when the in the meta. So, yeah. uh, I'm a big fan of any kind of like toolboxing. What do I need this turn? I can get it, just like we saw with uh, six skin. So yeah, so yeah, I, that's why I'll stick with the three, three. just the toolbox. All right, and then this next card actually helps explain why this guy might be here. So like, yep. I kind of feel like these are really cool thematically together because you have unexpected return, which is a five cost event. Challenge action is choose a character in your discard pile and put it into play. So very thematic. I mean, and I guess this is a spoiler, but I don't feel like I'm spoiling because it's talked about in the first episode of or book. Aegon Targaryen is dead when we start in the universe for Game of Thrones. Uh, this isn't, you know, he's gone. He, he's the one that got killed with uh, Ilya Martell. Like, that's that's what happened. So, yeah. it's kind of cool that you, like, you see this character and you're like, oh, crap, what is yeah. what is this? And you're like, oh, I get it. Maybe he's not dead or maybe yeah. this is the way it's working. But yeah. as far as this card goes, five costs to put something from your discard pile into play. It better be five or higher or really you're not going to play it. Exactly. And my jank heart has a spot for this. I'm going to give it a jank two. Heart, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going like to give two. it a two. But, I, I, uh, I was even going to go a little higher just because I yeah. think, I mean, I've seen cards like that cost this much. Like, that do work like what is it house of the undying or whatever yeah. that can do some crazy stuff like exactly and, and like it costs you, a lot <laughs> like you said targa is running out of options with uh cost slots right now so i mean i can go down a, a one of a dario uh gray worm Dro uh drogo so i mean if they get pulled out of entry or they go to my discard pile that's why i kind of like this event um because you know, there's ways that, like little fingers battling. You can get it down to a three cost if you need to. So it's no different than you know using blood of my blood for yeah. uh, a Dothraki or something like that. So I mean, it's a very timely event. That's why I'm giving it a two. It's jank. It's very timely, but I do like it. It says just put it in play and it doesn't go back. Yep, and it, it's a challenge action, which is a surprise. So we're talking yeah. about what Aaron said about earlier: play from your hand, not from the board. This does that in the middle of the phase, and I like that. If you were gonna pay five or more character for a good character anyway, this is giving you a discount, it right? Is. So like, it is. I mean, play it on your like trade logo or something like you know yeah. you you can play this and get a lot of value out of it. Like Tar can get a lot of gold trade routes. Yeah, uh, Slaver's Bay. Yeah, I mean, and it, so this card doesn't seem unreasonable to me no. as a card that you put in maybe in place of a character if you know you're gonna be resetting the board a lot or not and, resetting the board. But and like, new Danny works off stuff. of it too. Yeah, and so. I'm giving to give it a three because I think that this card has more promise than what yeah. we see if right so, now. If someone out there will put their heart into it, I think you'll see that card actually uh, swing a game yeah. in the end. Yeah. All right, we got our first Martell card. Six costs, another shadow with military and intrigue and five power. Or five strength, sorry. Uh, Sir Garrus Drinkwater. Is that Garrus? Garrus? Garrus Drinkwater? Uh, yeah, Jarrus. Garrus. Uh, I'm going to go with Garrus. <laughs> okay, that cool. sounds better. Drinkwater. Uh, we got a knight tree. That's kind of cool. Knights are fun. Uh, knights are always cool yep. when you have knights. Absolutely. He's got renown, which is always going to be always one of good. the best keywords you see. Uh, again, for seven, we can pop, pop him, or for total cost of seven between whenever you want to do it, you can put him in and out of shadows. And after he comes out of shadows, you choose a card in your plot deck and switch with the card in your used pile. So like a lighter version of Beneath the Bridge of Dreams, you get to pick the one you want, and you don't have to randomly shuffle and play. Uh, but this is great. I assume in the decks it goes in. I mean, it's perfect. Double down on definitely. lock plan. Like yeah. I mean, <laughs> definitely a one of in my deck. Like, like you said, for seven, you're getting a pretty good effect. 
He's good a, strength, good icons. Yep, he's a military and intrigue, which that's what Martel loves to do. He's a renown. He's a knight. Right now, Martel Wars has come. Uh, I mean, you're seeing the Dorns game coming back. You're mm-hmm. seeing the Ricassos. And there's two versions out there right now. One running Big Viper, and then one running just knights. So, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's already a knight meta? Yeah, cool. he, he's, uh, he's definitely going to fit in both of those decks. Um, in my deck, he'll, do, he'll definitely go to one of... Um, and then he's loyal, so he can't be bounced by breaking ties, mm-hmm. which is always good. And then the reaction, I mean, you're looking at a Martel Warriors to come. You're already getting two two of two different plots. Now this guy can make another plot a two of. So yeah. you could totally get effect of three, two different plots. But um, Do you ever not play him for shadows? No. Okay. I, I unless you're ask. unless you're gonna want to win that game and you need renown. Mm-hmm. Like let's just say this is my win turn. And I just need one renown. I calculated everything. I went second. I saw his board, and I just need renown to push that. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, that's the time you'll just marshal him. But so that makes him better, in my opinion, is absolutely. that he has the potential to be very useful just playing normally. Which goes back to the vanilla thing we're talking about—a six with two, a bicon for six with five power, still pretty good. Renown keyword shoots it up into good, really good. And when you're shadowing it, you get even more value. So. Exactly. If I want to trade routes three times, or if <laughs> yeah, I want right. another Valor Do Harris yeah. or Valor Mogulis. So for me right now, I think he he has that capability of messing around things. Mm-hmm. So I'll give him a five for me. I was gonna say four because I don't really play a ton of Martell, so like I have to see it. I have to get my butt whooped by it first to put it to five. But I definitely see potential for it to be something yeah. that where you're like. How did I just lose? And you're like, it's because of drink water. Yeah. That's what happened. Because I got the yeah. problem with time. <laughs> yep. That's that's what I'm thinking, so that I'm a Martel fan, so I'm giving that one extra over. So uh, uh, The next card is called Shadow City. It's a three-cost location that's loyal in Martel. It's got the Dorn trait. It's Shadow 2. So, again, you can play it for two and flip it up for two, one more than its cost. Uh, reduce the cost of cards you marshal in Shadows by one, and you can kneel it and discard a sh- card from Shadows to draw two cards. I love it because it fits with the cycle them- thematics, right? Like... I, I am interested. I'm interested. It's interesting that it's only in Martel right now because it makes sense from like a story perspective. Yeah. But I wonder if that's just going to put Martel into an overly good position with shadow cards. Um, what were they saying? They're like this big card basically reads pay two gold to draw two cards, right? Like, basically, <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I think it's cool. Like I like the oh no pay. I'm sorry, pay one gold to, to draw two cards because you reduce because you reduce it. it yeah. yeah. So I'm a fan. I like it. I think it. I think it's gonna only get better as the set goes. Or the cycle comes out. It has to, right? Yeah. Why else put this in the first pack? Yeah. You would think this should come in the sixth <laughs> right? pack, <laughs> right? So it has to get better, and then there has to be effects that will come out. Um, typically, they'll they're doing a mechanic two two cycles. Mm-hmm. So either this cycle and next cycle, hopefully there'll be uh, effects that will allow you to put cards back in the shadows and mm. things like that. Because I can see some synergy with. Discarding to draw and then flea bottom the person back, then using an effect to put that card that you flea bottom back in the shadows. Things like that is what I'm hoping. Yeah. But you're right. All I can see is up. Right now, I'm just going to give it a 2.5 to sure. 3. It, it is an Agreed. HRD location. So that oh, what's be, that mean? Sorry. Uh, House of the Red Door location okay, okay. that yeah. you could use. That's a good point. Um, they so, used to start off like right away, right marshaling away. shadows for one. You, we yeah. need need more shadow cards though. So exactly, that's it why it can't I'm, possibly be that it's good. Two point right five now. three yeah. right now. Um, I think the what I like about this card, and this comes from my playing Conquest, is like Conquest had this mechanic called Deep Strike, and you could put cards down and then you could flip them up middle of the combat. Right. One of the problems with that mechanic was that sometimes you would put cards at somewhere and then the battle would pass. You never do anything and you lose it. Right. Any outlet for card in any game, whether it be your hand or the battlefield or, or I'm sorry, like the, the board or the graveyard or whatever game you're playing is great. Outlets for cards that don't have uses at where they're at values up this yeah, thing. Yeah, value me. goes up. Exactly. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, you can sit in, in Game of Thrones and sit with a hand of cards that you may not be able to do anything with. And that kind of sucks sometimes. So being able to say, like, oh, at least in Shadows I can, you know, oh, this plan didn't work. I'm going to draw some cards. Draw cards. Exactly. Awesome. Three yeah. for me. Only going to go up, I think, as the cycle continues. Yeah, that that 2.53, like I said, is only going up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nefarious Alkalite is our first uh, neutral card. It's a three-cost character with an Intrigue and Power icon. It's got two power, uh, it's Intrigue and two strength. Uh, it's a ma- Maester, which is kind of cool, so if you're running that thing. Please, uh, more Maesters, yeah. get that Conclave, <laughs> because my army's lost, so I want to at least see the Jinn to do something. <laughs> right, seriously. <laughs> 
Uh, Shadows 2, so again, you pay 4 to get it out uh, yeah. throughout turns. You kneel it and pay 1 gold to choose a plot card until the end of the phase. Treat it as if its printed uh, checks box were blank except for traits. So... I don't know. That's pretty. It seems pretty good against like uh, in the name of the king. It's t- or, or, exactly. It's tough to find. Um, you think so? The because plots. We're talking about breaking ties. This would directly combat breaking ties, right? Yeah, I mean, it it, it ties though. It's only for um, until the end of the phase. So mm-hmm. you're gonna have to try to pick which phase. Yeah. Anyone who's smart, like they're gonna probably try to um, try to fi- figure a way out. Um, maybe bounce someone during the plot phase or the draw phase or even your marshaling phase. Maybe waste your gold on a non-loyal character. Then they're going to bounce you because you didn't decide to use this guy that turn. I do like shadows, though. So, that part of it makes it to me where it's like yeah. more surprising. So you got this card in shadows and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, let's yeah. start challenges. What? So I got something to do. Now your, you know, what red, red wedding doesn't trigger at all this yeah. time. So, or stuff like that, I think, gives him makes him like a three for me just because... He seems like a card that that fits in against like meta plots that are over overly controlling, uh, if, if especially since he can come from shadows. More specifically, because he yeah, from shadows. It, it definitely um, because he's neutral is gonna give you that because everyone's got a shadow card right now, so it's gonna give you that uh, unknown because they may think, oh, that's a uh, Robert Strong or mm. or Jerry's Drinkwater or whatever. So yeah, you're right. Um, the biggest thing that I could come up with with uh, um, some of the indie meta guys and even some of our guys here in Denver, um, right now, Blood of the Dragon, it can shut that down for that challenge phase that yep. Danny's looking to clear your board that's off. That's pretty good. So I think that's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you won't be able to use them on a uh, King in the North if you don't have a King. So yeah, be aware of that you will not be able to There's shut, no like stack yeah. here. It's going to yeah. already be triggered. I think it's funny to use against use Tom over Westeros. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I it got this control good. turn. Yeah. Uh, not really, you don't. And I'm yeah. now going to make you claim now military claim. when I have whatever, to. Yeah, yeah. Whatever claim you want uh, to block. That's a good point. I see being janky. Like, I yep. think I can see people that are like, this card's not going to be run. And then you do that thing that first edition did where you take a deck in and people are like, like yep. I did not see that coming because that was not part of this. Exactly. Yeah. And you just like find some way to cycle them out and do it every turn, and it, it just becomes frustrating jank, and you're like, dang it, I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah. I'll give him a 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. Uh, 2.53. Uh, so, uh, Burning Dead is a one-cost event. Uh, it's a neutral event, obviously. Remove each non-unique character in each player's de- dead pile from the game, draw one card. So, effectively exiling them, removing them from game, whatever you don't want to compare it to, but no more uh, close calls, I guess. You can protect from that, but do you run it ever? Maybe you run it in Mold Melee. It, that I way mean, you can hit the most targets for one goal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, this clearly was targeting the Drown God combo. Um, oh, you're right. Because that's like this is like the off switch. Yeah, this right. is off switch for it. So it really, right now, only has that. It, it was kind of like um, that event um, when Aspor came out and you kneel contested. Oh, like it was specifically, it yeah, yeah, it was specifically targeting a certain card that everyone knew was going to have a big effect. Burning Dead is just a, it's a reaction, a reactionary card. I mean, I'm going to give it a one because of that reactionary. Um, it does. Are have you some, giving it a one because? Fantasy Flight basically just printed it to stop that, something that they didn't. That's test my straight. belief. Okay. So that's why I'm giving. It I think one. I that's my that. belief. Um, but I like what you say. Um, I mean, you can get rid of you know uh, if you know House of Untying or um, you know things like the nature that messes with the dead pile. If you see decks starting to rise with messing with the dead pile, sure this deck this card's gonna go up. But right now, I only see it as it's just going to kill Drown God. So. Yeah, I'm wondering. So, like, you, you don't get to change. You do change the order of their dead pile, but I don't think you change it in a significant enough way yeah. that it matters. So, like, if this said, sh- like, remove all characters from their dead pile and shuffle it, I would be like, yes. Like, this card is, like, a three or four because you can now, like, k- k- put chaos into their dead pile and they won't be able to trigger, like, you know, Ren- Renly's ride will be, yeah. like, easier to, like, to mess with mess and things with, like that. But, yeah. unfortunately... Uh, in I'll, magical Christmas land. That yeah, <laughs> I like where your heads at though. You're thinking outside the box, close calls and Renly's rise. You're thinking of things um, that you know we wouldn't straight up think because everyone's thinking John God first, of mm-hmm. course. 
This card would be even better if it said draw X cards of the That of would the be day. cool. That would be um, intense. Wow. Yeah. But, that would immediately shoot it up. Right? Yeah. But like also though, it does have the drawback of each non unique. So unfortunately, like coast calls are gonna be mostly used yeah, for unique. That's the main problem. It's that's like the problem. And then the animation. biggest highest characters for Midling's Live will be um, yeah. unique as well. Some army characters, I guess. Yeah. But so that's the again. It's draw. It has those two drawbacks. Well, three drawbacks. It's targeting one specific uh, faction. Uh, it has non unique, and then it's only draw one card out of this. So this is a cantrip. You pay yeah. one to draw. Exactly. One. If you can, if you like cantrips and you want to do that, Thrones probably isn't the game for you. No, <laughs> no cantrips just don't work in this game. Yeah. You have a sixty card deck that you see maybe half of, depending on the deck you're playing. Yeah. Don't rely on a pay one cantrip. to draw one effect. Yeah. Um, all right, exchange of information. This is I've heard a lot of people talking about this card. Uh, I just can't wait to talk for this. Card. Just specifically on the like comparison between it and counting coppers and the math and everything people yep. are going into. But it's it's a three gold four initiative one claim plot. It's got knight and or kingdom and summer. Cool summer. I like summer yep. plots. We like summer. Um, when Kingdom revealed, ba kingdom's bad, but oh. summer. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We like summer. Um, when uh, choose an opponent and reveal the top ten cards of that deck, so that's a two to ten type of thing that yep. we're normally seeing, uh, which was what was making the fresh recruit so good. Uh, the opponent chooses one character, one location, one attachment, and one event uh, revealed this way, if able, and then adds them to the hand uh, to your hand, and then you shuffle your deck. And it's got a reserve of eight, which is pretty cool since you're potentially drawing three to four mm -hmm. cards. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I like this. <laughs> I like it's a, I like that it's got one gold higher than counting coppers. Yeah, <laughs> got one gold and one initiative higher than yep. counting coppers, <laughs> and you're getting. Basically the same amount of cards, but yeah, it, it, you can look at it as a drawback. You're having your opponent pick those cards, but if you are a good deck builder, yeah. every card's in there for a reason. exactly. I don't, I don't buy that as an argument here. Like, oh, your opponent's picking your cards. Your opponent's seeing your deck is what they're really doing. Yeah. like that's the part that that's, sucks more. Yeah, exactly. If they, if you like separated them into two piles and let them choose, that would be cooler. But like, yeah. I don't. Yeah. They pick, it's okay. Like, they have a bunch of bad decisions to make. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you could just pick the three cards, you know, um, or something like that. But, like you said, yeah, it's them seeing, it's them getting inferring information of what your deck's trying to do. Um, but, if we, like you talked about, we go into the stats. I know Fred Bird did that post or whatever. That was really interesting. Alejandro brought up a good point, though. Like, you're more likely looking at 30 characters maybe if you run attachments three to four attachments you're looking usually typically anywhere from 12 to 15 locations and typically six events so as Fred Burr put it out he he found with some of his mathematics um, I don't know if he used Alejandro's one ratio but he found with some his ratio that this card always has an upside no matter when you play it. Where and is that just because of the values on it or is it because you're you're potentially drawing like Because of the ratios okay. of what you're putting into your deck, you're you're more you're going to most likely find all, all three of these things. So, so in a, in a sixth of your or well, four, in less me, than a sixth of your deck, you're going to usually hit at least three. You're going to find yeah, exactly. You're going to find a character or location attachment. And because we always have to think about the things that are happening. So you're drawing seven cards in your setup, right? Yep. And then you're setting them up in a redrawing. So you're not even going to get to play this until you've potentially drawn ten cards. Yep. Most likely, right? Yep. So then you're hitting a fifth of your deck instead of a sixth of your deck, yep. which makes it easier to yeah. hit four cards, right? So really good here, I agree. I don't. I don't know. Wanna, I don't know all the math, but I tend to agree with the fact that this card's probably better than counting coppers in my head. Yeah. Uh, especially since it has a summer keyword. Now. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so. uh, Tyrell can use this effect. Yep. Tark Summer can use this effect. Um, I like it with um, Wars to Come. If you want to run two coppers with Targ to uh, exchange information, because I like to run the Beggar King. So yeah. Beggar King can trigger off this because, you know, three gold's typically a low cost. Mm -hmm. um, most people are going to run four gonna or five. Um, so I, I see it as an upswing for those two factions. Um, I may even try it in my Martell deck because I need to see all four of those things, um, usually mid-game mid, mid -game when I'm trying to pull off the win. Um, so, I, I like I said, I'm going to give this a four. Um and through the testing, I hope it goes up to a five. I agree. Yeah, I'm like four, and I mean, based off of the math, I, I don't. I guess what I'm saying is like it would be a five when you're comparing the two. I think four is good in general for most plots. Like, yeah. um, I I tend to 
cut Cannon Copper's first one, I shouldn't, because to me it's kind of a boring plot that does what it does, but it doesn't, like, affect... It doesn't directly affect the board state, and that's my, like, my my reptile brain exactly, being like, yeah. I want something that destroys Boys, stuff. Yeah. Like, and so... It's gotta mess the, with my opponent. The interaction here, I think, is what makes my small reptile brain like it, where I'm like, hey, my opponent and I are playing a game now, instead yeah. of me just drawing three cards. And, like, I don't know. Yeah. Things that make your opponent think about stuff is Yeah, Copper's definitely, uh, uh, if you want to, if you're a person that wants to keep your hand secret or your deck mm-hmm. secret, run Counting Copper. Like, Alejandro was big on that. Like, yeah. he was really into information is the one a commodity in this game that you never want to give away. Yeah. And I'm kind of on the, like, maybe lower end of that. Like, yeah. I don't mind it so much if my opponent tries to figure out what I'm doing because I like building jank. So it's yeah. like, good luck, because I don't even know half of what I'm doing yeah. half the time. So <laughs> I'm learning new ways <laughs> with my deck all the time. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I agree. And my deck with the Martel Wars to come, uh, I think it's a tank. So just like what a tank is, you see it coming, good luck stopping it. So <laughs> that's kind of like how I'm going to go off of that part with this. But it's not for every deck. It's not mm-hmm. for every faction. But for those, like I said, it's going to be a four to five for me because it is just going to give you that upswing that you need. Yeah, yeah. And it's good, like I said, it's good stats, it's good reserve, and it's got good traits. All right. What's your, what's your, what card are you most excited about in this set? Like, you can pick whatever you want, and there's no stipulations here. Like, what's the one that you saw and you liked? What's the one that you like the future the most for? Just what yeah. do you think and explain it? I'll give a couple. Um, the most efficient, clear, is the Tyrell. Yeah. That's just going to be, uh, I know people hate Tyrell right now. But people can't deny when you do play Tyrell, there's a lot of interaction, actually. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a non-interactive deck. Well, you're, you're doing a lot of things that are affecting both decks exactly. all the time. I mean, it's, it's yeah. silly to say that it's a non it's yeah. or It's very... It's, uh, Tyrell's very constructive, and that card is constructive for you. Mm-hmm. So it can be a little one-sided on the fun, but when everyone you know plays that deck, you can't say you don't love that playing that type of style. Yeah. So, but pure efficiency, I go with that. My favorite one that I'm uh, ready to, ready and willing to play is Garrus. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to just start messing with my plots. Um, <laughs> it's just going to give me that extra um, that extra turn I need to you know either put put out the characters I need on a board or if I need to refill from a reset I couldn't stop with uh, someone always tells things like that. It's very toolboxy, mm-hmm. so that's my favorite. The upswing. I'm gonna probably have to go with I think it was Shadow City. Yeah, I was gonna say that for I Upswing think, too. I think that card has the most potential in the set yeah. for me. So like agreed. Upswing and definitely Shadow yeah. City. Um I'm looking like the Bolton Flayers, I uh, I'm looking for that to be good in aggro, bring aggro decks back. And then lastly, um Nighttime Marauders. Nighttime it's Marauders just is gonna my efficiency yeah. card in this one. Yeah. There's so much you get from that card. Exactly. It's just so money. Uh, taking away things from your opponent, looking at things from your opponent. Like, you're getting all of the non currency forms of currency in that card. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking to prove my theory that pillage is as much a variance that people want to say it is. It actually is enough variance to be efficient mm-hmm. and mess with you on both fields, psychologically and on the game board state. Yeah. I think my favorite card's probably Beneath the Bridge of Dreams because I like what it does to the, the game state. Yep. Like, I like the... I'm always a fan of, of like, let's let's do this, and, like, you play that like that game of, now you've got to figure out more than I do, and I know what I'm doing with my deck. Do you know it yet? And Because I've just played this, and now I have plots left, and I can hit you with something again, and the chaos that that induces to me is, like, the... It's brood, but it's also something I love about this, so... Uh, I'm looking forward to see, like, maybe uh, Jesse Carpenter's Klansman deck maybe try to utilize that cool. with some reinforcements yeah. and Tyrion's <laughs> Chain and War Plots and mm-hmm. just get some of that stuff out. So I'll definitely try that as well um, in a... Uh, Laney jumpers. It can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. The card is fun. Like, yeah. it may be really bad, and you might not want to do that because it's random. And yeah. but it's it's like got this aspect to it that just yeah. seems fun to me. It's your fun kitchen table or maybe yep. uh, store championship deck. Yeah. So. All right. So that's our deck review. We went really long this time because we're both talkative people and we have a yep. lot to say. So deal with it. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, what, announcements. So Collector Mania. Uh, Aaron's here now. Uh, he's in Parker. Uh, so come down and play if you're near the area, and we'll probably try to get something more common coming down. Or um, that would be great. Uh, you don't have to come here to play though, even though this is the channel you're watching. Uh, there's tons of places to play. You guys meet up on Fridays, I think. At yeah, table, at tabletop. Tab, tab, tab. So if you guys on Collector Mania see this. Uh, and you guys are looking to uh, just try out Thrones, 
um, you can join our page, The Rock. Um, it's just T H E and then R O C K. Yeah, we'll link we'll link that. Join our Colorado. We're trying to grow the meta, like uh, Kyle was saying. Um, we got people from Denver all the way down to Pueblo that will meet up. Um, we're looking to do our regionals on July 14th July down 14th, in Colorado yeah. Springs. And we're sponsoring that as yeah. uh, the Bearded Klansmen are sponsoring that. So, oh. will there be some cool Bearded Klansmen swag that we're going to make? And so, don't don't miss out on that if you're looking yeah. for you know fun time. And if you're on the AGOT second edition page, please interact with us. Give us critiques or whatever. We're just trying to produce content, trying to get our meta lively again. And if we can interact with other minutes, that's even better for us. We get to learn. You guys get to learn back. Or we just exchange information. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we'll be repping uh, the wars to come. Yeah. Exchange information. <laughs> uh, please check, tune into that. I'm a um, new cast member there. Um, and I definitely will be repping uh, this um, Bearded Clan's been there. That way we can just, like I said, uh, just have a uh, good contact list and everything like that. And mm -hmm. just make this game better because the community is what makes this game. Exactly. Um, Agot.cards is a great site to go if you want to be able to read, listen, watch, learn, build. I mean, yeah. there's tons of resources there. Um, uh, if you are used to being the second edition and you're only recently getting back into it, this is a giant shift. Um, a lot of sites were disparate. Uh, White Book was trying to do a lot to pull that stuff together, but now we have Agot.cards. So, Please go there and do things and interact with the community. Yep. And it is a great site. It's a great compilation of everything you'd need to become to, from beginner to expert, casual to competitive. It's great. It's a great resource. And lastly, I know it's a little too soon, but Netrunner, come. Yeah. Just come. It, the, you know, it still stings a little bit. As a Netrunner player, I'm kind of astonished as well. But, you know, we'll Throne. welcome you with open arms. Exactly. <laughs> come, lay, cry on our shoulders. And we'll find and we'll get you a better game. <laughs> With shadows, you get your hidden information. Exactly. So face down cards. All right. See you next time, everybody. Like, guys. comment, and subscribe, and uh, see you later.